How we doing today? This is Chris at A to B. We're uh, going to be getting into the uh, the master cylinder on the International. Um, been a really busy week in the shop with customer work and haven't had a lot of time to shoot any video for you all. So we're going to try and do a quick one here on going through the master cylinder and seeing what's involved with that and what's inside one of these old master cylinders. So I'll show you some of the parts here. The, this is the master cylinder body. Um, International has Wagner Lockheed based brakes on it. Um, pretty common in their day, not so much anymore. Um, this, is, this truck has single circuit brakes, so this master cylinder has a single piston in it. Um, and it has no backup for any type of failure like a modern car since 1967 does. Uh, since 1967, cars have been required by the federal government to have dual circuit brakes, which splits the brake system. Um, but this vehicle, this truck predates that. Um, because this is a Wagner Lockheed master cylinder, was not able to find a master cylinder rebuild kit that is a direct fit for it. Um, but... My great guys at the local Napa found a kit for me that I believe is from a, actually for a Delco Moraine master cylinder from like a GM truck of the same era. Um, not a lot of difference in all these old ones. Um, this is the master cylinder piston out of the International. You can see that it was falling apart and rotten and corroded. Um, brake fluid absorbs water out of the atmosphere, so... When these old cars sit forever, the brake fluid actually starts to congeal and it starts to draw moisture in and rust and corrode and all that stuff. So as you can see, these pistons, even though they're not technically for the same master cylinder, they are virtually the same. There's only so many ways around the barn on this stuff back then. So most of this stuff is fairly similar regardless of who made it. Um, so the only difference we did have to do, you can see the original piston has a hole in it for the original pedal push rod to go clear down inside the piston. This one, this other piston from the kit, it originally just had a dimple in it that was the depth of this little angle chamfer area here. Uh, my friend Joe had to bore this out to diameter and to depth to make it work from my application but i think it'll work great and uh, thanks joe anyway let me move you over here and set you down we'll start with the brake cylinder hone and we will start honing the master cylinder bore this is a brake cylinder hone um, it's very similar to a street stone engine hone basically same concept same same type of idea um, just a whole lot smaller maximum diameter on it is is about two inches or so it really doesn't give much pressure beyond that but it will go down to about three quarters of an inch or so um so it'll do wheel cylinders and all that too we'll be using the same thing on the wheel cylinders on the international so the first thing we want to do is want to bore uh Hone the, hone the bore out in the master cylinder. You don't ever want to put any kind of fluid or anything or any kind of oil in the brake system that is not brake fluid. So we are going to use brake fluid for our honing fluid to hone the bore. So we just collapse the stones, put them in the bore. I have turned my air pressure down on the compressor. So and you just run it back and forth at a steady space until the bore starts to clean up you stop and check once in a while and see what it looks like it's actually starting to look pretty clean if we can see down through there it does have a few pits in it but these old brake systems are actually fairly forget forgiving they don't get real picky about little imperfections so I think that is pretty good. Grab a can of brake cleaner and we'll clean it out and see what it looks like. You 
You want to make sure you brake clean this stuff out with a good drying brake cleaner that doesn't leave any residue behind, doesn't have any oil in it. Um, and then we'll blow it out here. And then you should end up with a bore that looks about like that. The shadowing in the camera is making it look worse than it is. It has a little bit of spotting down here, but I can't really feel it. All I can do is you can see it, but you can't really feel it. So all these spots can't really feel them. So. I think it'll be good to go ahead and put it together. We can at least try here. So the, the actual master cylinder for this vehicle is very expensive. Get rid of the gloves now that we're done with the honing. Anyway, next thing you want to do is We'll see, we'll put a little bit of brake fluid back down the bore to lubricate the bore. We don't want to tear anything up here. We don't want to roll these, we don't want to roll these rubber seals over and we don't want to cut them in any way. Good idea to go ahead and put some brake fluid on all this stuff and get it all Get it all covered in brake fluid. And then we'll go ahead and put that piston in that way. And we will go ahead and put in the stop. Gonna do this from the right way around though. We'll go ahead and put in the stop washer. And we'll put in the snap ring for the stop washer. And then we will go ahead and push. Go ahead and get the piston pushed all the way down in there like so. at something right there. I don't want that down in there. So we'll push that piston down until it contacts the stop. Next thing we'll do is the second, the primary cup, we will go ahead and lubricate that and then it goes in the opposite direction. So we want it to go in this way with the cup facing down up and when it's all the way down in there it shouldn't have any rolls or anything in it you can see how the edge is we can see the edge all the way around then our next piece in is going to be our spring and we need to put our copper washer on our end cap The next piece we're going to put in, this is a check valve, so you got to make sure which way these go. On this one, the fluid comes in from this end, so we want this end facing the piston cups. So the fluid goes in, but it keeps the fluid from coming back too much. And then we'll put the sealing washer for the check valve on top of it.
And the next thing we'll do is we'll lubricate the face of the end cap and we'll put it all on top of there. And then we screw this down until it contacts. My ceiling washer didn't stay right on there. So let me just turn that down until it's tight. Then I'll take this over and put it in the vise. There's the wheel cylinder I took off the other day. Still working on getting that one apart. It's not one to come apart. It's still, uh, the pistons are still pretty frozen in there. So after we've got all that together, we put the master cylinder, we put the master cylinder in the vise and tighten it down lightly. Trying to find a place to sit you all here so I can get it. Sorry for the camera action, not trying to make you sick. Well, how about this? We'll just go this way. We'll come over here to the toolbox and we will get, I'll just bring you with me to get the pliers we need. Just a pair of channel lock pliers to grip the, grip the knurled portion. Just a little bit bigger. There we go. And then we just take that and cinch the cap down. And then we will take this back over here to the bench. next thing we will do is then we'll just take this push rod and make sure that we build pressure. We push the piston in and it's building pressure on my finger so we won't know until we go to put it on the truck of how we turned out with that so here's the cap this is the brake fluid cap and the sealing washer that goes on it so it just screws on top like this and then we have this other we have the brass brass fitting that adapts it to the truck this side the brake light switch screws into and then this side the brake line hooks onto it just goes on here you got one copper washer the big one big copper washer goes on the banjo bolt the banjo bolt goes through the brass fitting there's another copper washer goes on the other side of it and then it screws on here like so and 
And I'm going to leave that loose for now because that will have to be adjusted when it's in the truck to get everything square and where it needs to go. But Looks like for the most part we may have a functional master cylinder. So stay tuned for the next installment. Um, I'm going to be going to try to get the parts truck for Jackson's project at some point in time. So we'll have to be taking some time to do that. So the international is going to come sort of in bits and pieces, but thanks for tuning in and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for new uploads. Thanks. I'll talk to you later.